My name is Julie Zwillick. I I worked at uh, TVO. I was a TVO Kids host, one of the sort of first original waves of TVO Kids hosts um, back between 1997 and 2001. Um, I worked with Patty and Joe and Phil and Kevin and Rebecca. Um, Giselle, the sort of original wave. I'm sure you still get people stopping you and saying, I remember you from TVO. Um, you're living in the States right now. And you heard about what was happening with the strike with CMG. Why did you want, why did you get in touch and want to talk about it? Yeah, I, I reached out to uh, to you guys because it brought back, brought back some memories. I um, When I worked back at TVO, I was young. I was in my mid uh, my mid twenties. Um, we actually were the ones who brought the CMG, the Canadian Canadian Media Guild uh, Union, into TVO. And the reason that we felt um, compelled to do that was because at that time we were having a hard time um, getting equitable pay and um, and job security. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, we were having trouble. Those of us who are performers now, I can only speak from the, the performer, the kids television performer position. Mm -hmm. Um, I, of course, these issues are much larger and cover news and entertainment, education, a lot of the other things that TVO and TFO do. Um, but from my perspective, uh, sorry. Um, I was, yeah, yeah. No, you said uh, you were part of the union that started the CMG union uh, yeah. 20 years ago. And for, what you experienced 20 years ago to see it unfolding now makes you think what? Yeah. I mean, 20 years ago, we brought in the union um, and to see the same issues happening again is a little bit disheartening. In some ways, it's not surprising. Um, TV Ontario is, is a publicly funded entity. Um, and these things have always been a little difficult, but I think that um, people really need to, um, uh, legitimately wake up now to realize um, that things are tenuous. People, good, strong talent um, across the board. I'm not talking about the people in front of the camera. I'm talking about everybody that works at TV Ontario um, provide a absolutely crucial service to Ontarian Canadian culture. And it will disappear um, if it's not protected. I'm glad you brought that up because I think when people hear strike, when people hear union, they might think, well, why do you have a union? I don't have a union. Um, yeah. I'm a lot of people are struggling right now. And when you pull aside management, the government, the union, why is it important for people to care about what's happening? And why does yeah, TV I mean still matter to you 20 years on? Great question. I mean, it's part of the zeitgeist, right? We we have these issues are happening across the world, across Canada, across the United States, where I happen to be living at the moment, and across the world. Really, we've got cost of living problems. We've got income inequality, um, uh, the ratio of housing to income. These are huge issues, and um, it it matters because um, you know, I mean. If if we just take it to a smaller degree here and just look at, you know, for example, the importance of, of TBO and TFO to the province and beyond. If we look at culture, if we look at Ontarian Canadian culture, um, these things will disappear if they're not protected. And, you know, I, I don't mean to get off topic from the question that you asked, but but if I can just pivot for a second to Canadian uh Children's television production, for example, is famous the world over, wins awards all the time for, uh, you know, international Emmys, et cetera. It's exported and syndicated across the world. But here's a little inside secret that, that some uh, industry insiders won't know. Many of the people who produce this television, whether they work at TVO still or they work at CBC or independent production houses, et cetera, a good majority of those people were trained at TVO. They came from TVO and they moved on sometimes to get better pay and more job security. They are producing world-class television that is allotted uh, around the world, but they were trained in the, in the thick and well-developed and highly mentored um, atmosphere of TVO and TFO. It, it, it's, apt, it's so valuable in a way that a lot of people don't quite see. Why do you think it does it so well? 
Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think that TVO and TFO are not, you know, it's publicly publicly supported art, right? Mm-hmm. With an educational um, mindset behind it. Um, so you've got a lot of um, uh, professionals who are not influenced by sponsors, you know, not owned by advertisers, not swayed by commercial pressures. They really have children's best interests in mind. And even when people move on from TPO and TFO, they bring that heart um, with them. Uh, you cannot get it anywhere else. Um, and it is, man, it's one of the last surviving bastions of this type of production. It really um, is. We got an email from somebody who uh, was in Australia or said when they were in Australia, um, 50% of the programming they saw they were watching was from TVO. Uh, myself, I've said this so many times before, I learned how to speak English by watching TVO. When I had my kids, I, you know, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, <laughs> what's yep. up, what's yeah. up, you know. <laughs> I joke that, uh, you know, uh, TVO, like Pokeroo was the original nanny Netflix. Um, and it is such, like, for me, it's such a full circle moment to be a part of it. And I know for you too, um, for it to stay with you for two decades, what would you say is the fondest memory that you have uh, being part of TVO kids, being part of TVO? It's a family. No, I mean, it, it, it's a family. I mean, I, there's no other way to explain it. The folks that I worked with 20 years ago at TVO and TVO Kids, I am still very close with all these folks. We see each other often. I mean, I'm in the States, but, you know, when I come back up to Toronto, we see each other often. We we text each other. I was texting with Giselle this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, we're really tight. And we're tight because we were thrown in the trenches. We created a lot of television for kids on very low budgets, um, being paid very little, but man, our hearts were in it hundred percent. And that links you in a certain way um, and links us to our audience in a certain way that is, um, that is really ongoing. Uh, you know, when I speak to Joe and you can see some of the stuff that, that um, Joe Motiki does on, on social media, we've still got folks who we spent every day after school with uh, doing live TV, write to us and and communicate with us all the time because um, it, it, it mattered. Mm-hmm. It mattered. And it mattered to us as well. Um, it must be a cool I, feeling. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it okay. is, it like, is. It's so weird having a, because uh, I just want to like, uh, but it must be such a, a cool feeling getting that feedback from people all these years later. It is. It's wild. I, especially because the the kids that I entertained back in the late 90s and early 2000s are adults. They're parents now. And um, and so when I come into contact with them and, you know, we still get recognized it because it makes a, an imprint um, that, that really is quite substantial. And it's not just that they were watching their favorite entertainment. It's that they remembered that we showed their picture on TV. They remember that we discussed hard issues when they came up. They remembered that we announced their birthday. They remembered that they were included um, in a way that they weren't included when they're just watching sort of one-way media. Um, and this was, of course, before social media, before you know, lots of interaction was, was possible. So those, it, it was a really special time in children's television production. It was, um, I don't know that a person could get that live TV um, broadcasting experience um, nowadays, I don't think it exists anymore. Um, so, you know, we, we, um, we really, the, the memories are great and the memories are two way. The memories aren't just about my memories of working at TVO. The memories are uh, the pe- uh, of what people have, of what we, you know, our whole large teams worked so hard to, to produce. Um, and I think that matters too, because, um, you know, TVO, it's not just about what's happening in the GTHA, um, it's about the province right. of Ontario. And TVO kids used to travel around the province. Um, myself now with the thread, we've been going, we've been trying to get outside of the GTHA and hear yeah. stories uh, from people, um, you know, 
because even though it is a large province, even though we're in the same province, the experiences are very different. Do you worry about what's going to happen to those stories um, if TVO is not around? Nam, I do. Um, and, and, and I remember very distinctly, I, we made it a practice to visit all around the province often. I saw parts of Ontario that um, I would have never had the opportunity to see, and I'm grateful for it um, to this day. There are still um, a lot of folks who do not have access to cable TV or satellite TV and who do not have good internet access. Um, they do, however, um, and they are, however, able to access um, TVO and TFO on air. And it matters greatly to these families and to these children. Like you said, there can be the immigrant experience where people are um, learning how to speak English and sort of getting a taste of, um, of Ontarian Canadian culture. Um, there, there are ways in which um, there, you know, TVO and TFO bring equity um, in a number of different respects. First of all, protecting Ontarian Canadian culture, because we have a lot of American culture um, that bleeds in um, and, and, and it needs to be protected. We've got um, Franco-Canadian culture, Franco-Ontarian culture, which TFO serves, absolutely crucial. And we've got folks who need the access to good information, good educational television, um, and they can only access it through our broadcasts. Um, are <laughs> I still speak as if it's you know it, it just means uh, so much to me. It's, it's tattooed on my heart, so mm. I still feel like it's us. Same. It's never gonna. It's uh, no matter what happens. Um, it's, uh, I feel like it's, and it might be cheesy to say, but I just kind of feel like it's part of my DNA because I just believe so much in uh, the work that TVO does. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to get uh, one more final thought for you, from you on um, what you, if, you, if there's anything else that you wanted to add. I, I really think that if TVO and TFO don't lock down great talent with equitable market pay and job security, they will continue to train and lose um, these folks. And possibly, you know, not only would these valuable individuals move on, um, but I think that TV Ontario will suffer. And this beacon of Ontarian Canadian culture um, will be in further danger of, of becoming less relevant. Um, and we can't let that happen. It's too important. It's too important. And by the way, I do think too that the that the executive part of TV Ontario, um, I do think that they care as well, or else they wouldn't be working at TVO. Um, they could be working in the private sector. I know they care, and I know it's complicated the way that things are funded. But if we prioritize it, it can be done, and it needs to be done sooner rather than later. Um, to end the strike, put people back to work, which is where they want to be, and serve uh, the children and the citizens and the the people living proudly in Ontario. I'm so I'm so glad you said that about the executives because um, you know this uh, th this work is very personal and it's um, very much about values and serving the public. And um, I wouldn't take that away from anybody. Um, no. But, you know, what you were saying about, I just wanted to add a comment about, you know, like I th I think of all the archives that we have. I saw a video of Martin Short, the Martin Short, <laughs> on one of the TVO Kids programmings from like the yeah. 70s. And it's like, that is part of like, that is bigger than the province of Ontario, right? Oh, yeah. So, to for for him to have a little bit of like his beginning and his history and we have that in yeah. our archives and to think of yeah. all the people that have been on tv it just like blows your mind and honestly if you looked you could go on and on and on with that yeah. i mean now you know this across you know there in multiple places in canada right now there are museums popping up that are highlighting canadian children's television that's happening for a reason it's happening because it's world famous and a lot of it 
comes from TV Ontario, from TVO Kids, from things that are adjacent to that, and from people who came from TVO. Museums. Museums. What is that? Like, Museums. Adult poppy syndrome. Like we kind of downplay our achievements. We should be like shouting this out on top of the mountaintops. Well, the you know, that's the Canadian way. Yeah. We always think, oh, you know, I'm I'm doing my best. I'm doing my job. And and um, I don't I want to be I want to stay humble and I don't want to toot my own horn too much, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think it might benefit us. Um, and again, I'm living in the States at the moment and, and I'm a dual citizen. I, I became a Canadian uh, by choice. I immigrated to Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that sometimes we need to turn up the volume a little bit mm-hmm. and realize our worth. And that is what the brave union members of CMG have decided to do. They went on strike. That's something we never did. And it's been threatened a few times. This is not the first time that we've gotten close to this point, but it's the first time that CMG union members decided to do it, to actually go on strike. And trust me, I know that was not an easy decision. No, um, it and, and it's time to um, to keep it real. That was my sign off for TV <laughs> Kids. I remember I was going to say... It is. Thank you for all the work that uh, you did um, on TVO. It's really appreciated. And I think it the work itself um, speaks for the work speaks for itself. But I also think you always have to give people their flowers when you have an opportunity. So this is me giving you your flowers. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all you're doing. Really appreciate you.